There is plenty to say, there would be plenty to say about the epistle and the gospel of today, but I would rather speak about a recent contact with one of the, one of the people. Uh, I wrote, uh, by Christ, um, I'm sorry, by Christianity, Christ is absolutely needed. And this faithful, this layman said, wrote back, but isn't it obvious that Christ, Christendom needs Christ? Isn't that just stating the obvious? Alas, no, it isn't obvious. And that's what's so terrible. Um, we are in what we readily call Western civilization. We are part of Western civilization. We are proud of it, uh, with, not without reason. Um, but actually, but Christendom, that's an old fashioned word for an old-fashioned idea. We got rid, of, got rid of Christ long ago, and Western civilization is thriving without Christ. We don't, we don't need Christ. So, so what remains of Christendom no longer needs Christ. We in the modern world, we've grown up. We're adults. We're no longer children. We needed Christ to form and shape our civilization, but once he had done that, then we, we, we no longer needed him. Uh, we were like a, a little boy who's been learning to ride a bicycle with his father always holding on the saddle, that's how it used to be. Now, of course, they've got little runners which make it little, added on to the, the bicycle and he learns to lie. He learns to ride perhaps without his father holding the saddle at the back. But when I was young, certainly it was my father who ran behind us, holding the saddle and making and, and enabling us to keep our balance and learn how to learn how to ride a bike, balancing it. So it, it's as though the modern man is like the boy, uh, telling his father no longer to please hold hold the saddle. I don't need you anymore, Dad. Please leave me alone and let me ride the bike on my own. The dad says, well, watch out because you're, you're, you haven't yet learned. Oh, no, 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 dad, don't worry, I don't, 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 kind, please leave me alone. So, all right, says dad, he, he, the boy's going to have to learn the hard way, perhaps. So he stops running behind the boy holding the saddle and, and, and balancing the bike. And sure enough, the boy crashes and he hurts himself and he starts crying and he goes home to mum for consolation. Uh, but uh, but he, he hadn't learned, he, had, he hadn't yet learned. Modern man is like that child who tells Christ, all right, you held the saddle in order to enable us to arrive at Western civilization, but you're no longer needed. We, we can now run civilization on our own, and that's what we're going to do. And that's Freemasonry. Freemasonry is the organization that took the place of the church, uh, the, in, the, in the old days, the church was concerned, there was a union of church and state, first and foremost. The whole state was united to the church. The state was Catholic, the state, um, the, the politician, the, 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 the priests did not run the details of the politics because they had better things to do, can be, can be concerned with the salvation of souls. They needed to act as priests and not to act as politicians. But the politicians deferred to the priests. That was the union of church and state. And it was a union which served both church and state. For instance, if there was a matrimonial problem, the police couldn't solve it. The, 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 the mother, the, the woman rings up the police, my husband is beating me up. The police go and knock on the door and when the policeman knocks on the door, the, the wife and husband appears and the wife tells the wife tells the policeman to go away because 
he's not going to be the, able to solve the, what, the problem that there is. And uh, she will try to solve it alone with the husband. But, but because, and indeed, the policeman is not necessarily the right man to try to solve a marital problem. In Italian, fra moglie e dito non mettere il dito. Fra moglie e marito non mettere il dito. Between husband and wife, don't put your little finger. Don't try putting your little finger. Between husband and wife, it, it's... But a priest can help between president and wife. A policeman can't necessarily. It's not his job. And it's a very delicate thing between husband and wife. Don't put your little finger in between. But a priest can help. Therefore, when the policeman uh, is, gets this telephone call, he rings up Father Joe. Uh, Father Joe, um, I, I've got a problem. I, I need your help. Uh, this, this, this wife is, is, has rung me up to say she's being beaten up. Could you please go around and see them? And so the priest will go around and she won't say to Father Joe, get lost. She'll say the policeman, get lost, but she won't say that. She's got too much respect for Father Joe. He's a good priest. And so she will even explain the problem to him, and then he will insist on hearing the husband's side of it so that he gets the balance, so that he doesn't just hear one side of the story. And with luck, Father Joe has got something of a gift for restoring peace between husband and wife. He will tell them to pray the rosary together so that they are no longer clashing with one another, but they're both with the rosary, uh, or, or to turn towards God, and towards God they can put things together again. The priest can help. But um, what, what, what happened t t today is that, uh, and, and then uh, the, the, on the other hand, if the priest is, is, is holding a, serv a, a mass, is uh, celebrating a mass, and somebody in the congregation starts making a noise or starts making a ruckus, um, it's not fitting for the priest to go down uh, and try to sort it out physically, even if he's a strong man. It's just not fitting. Uh, so, but, but it is fitting for the policeman. So the, the priest gets somebody in the congregation to ring up Father, uh, a Policeman Joe, and Policeman comes and, he, and immediately, he's a big burly man, uh, and he's going to throw out this this ruckus maker if the ruckus maker doesn't doesn't come, doesn't calm down. So as soon as the policeman appears and the policeman, it's it, it is his job to restore order, physical order, um, not spiritual order, but physical order. And therefore, the policeman helps uh, the priest by sim his simple appearance uh, in the church makes the man calm down, and the, the mass continues. So it's obvious that the policeman, the state, has gifts and powers which the church doesn't have. The church has spiritual gifts and powers which the material state doesn't have. And therefore the union of state and church is as natural as in the village the union of the priest with the policeman. The, the priest and policeman work together and the policeman is better at certain things and the priest is better at other things. Together they can complement one another and the villages run in peace. So the, uh, the, the, church, the, the church used to be united to the, to the Catholic states. Uh, in, this case, in England, this was the case until Henry VIII, which is, who is now 450 years ago. Uh, that's a long time, four and a half centuries. But ever since Henry VIII, the England has been saying to the church, we don't need you. Stop, please, holding your hand on the bicycle. Stop trying to lay your hands on my bicycle. I want liberty. We here want, we English want liberty. We don't need the church, the Catholic church. We've got a, the Anglican church instead, and the Anglican church is enough. It's enough. Uh, Almighty God, excuse if me, I, I express, express myself absolutely blasphemously, but this is, this, this is the basic attitude. This is what's behind the modern world. Almighty God is a good chap, we would say, but he, uh, we English gentlemen, we need to sort him out a bit because he does, he is liable to exaggerate. For instance, artificial means of birth control, he absolutely condemns. And that, that's, 
that's, that's impossible in a modern city. It's just not realistic to condemn absolutely the use of artificial means of birth control. So, dear God, he, the dear Catholic God, he does need sorting out a bit. And we English gentlemen, we can do that and we do. And so, he, he needs to leave us some liberty to do what we want or what we think is best. That's, that's, the, that's the mentality. And it's been the mentality in England ever since. Uh, it's the mentality of the Anglican Church, and it's been the mentality of England ever, ever since Henry VIII. Now notice, the Anglican Church has relied upon people, upon people having common sense. It's relied upon people judging for themselves what's right and wrong. And as long as the English have preserved their common sense, the Anglican Church has worked. It, it's fun, or let's say it's functioned. It hasn't had what the necessary to send souls to heaven. No, that they lost, but they didn't care. They, they, the English began not caring about heaven when they broke off from the Catholic Church. If you want to go to heaven, the way is the Catholic Church, and it's the only way. That one understands when one has the Catholic faith. But if one, if, if the, one's Catholic faith slips, then one thinks that Western civilization can stand on its own feet without Christ, without the, his church, which is the continuation of his incarnation. When our Lord Jesus Christ ascended to heaven, he knew, obviously, that he, was, that he would no longer be on earth, like he's been for uh, 33 years. He won't be there. What's he going to do in order to continue his work of saving souls? He's, he's founded this church. He's built it very carefully with a pope and with bishops and with priests. And uh, the, 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 he's, he's, he's endowed the church, the Catholic church, with all the means to continue his work. And, and the Catholic church is, is absolutely needed. Extra ecclesia and dula salus. Outside of the church, there is no salvation. That's an old Latin saying, and it's true. With some exceptions, but not that many. So the people, and people learn, they, they learn of the claim of the Catholic Church, that, that it is absolutely necessary for salvation. But many people say, that's an arrogance, that's a, a presumption. The Catholic Church can't make any such presumption. There are many religions on the face of the earth, and they're all good because we all worship the same God. That's not true. The, the, the God that the Catholic Catholics worship is three persons in one, in one Godhead, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And the Protestants, not all Protestants believe in the Holy Trinity. The Muslims absolutely reject the Holy Trinity. The Jews, uh, the Talmudic Jews, absolutely reject the Holy Trinity. Therefore, they're not, we're not believing in the same God. It's, it's, it's an, a serious error, but it's, it's, it's convenient. It's much easier for all of us to live together if we all turn our religion into slush and abandon its, its proper claims. Our Lord says, at one point in, his, in the Gospel of St. John, if I said to you Pharisees that I was not God, I would be lying. I would be a liar like yourselves. It's not a lack of humility that makes God say he's God. It's the truth that makes God say he's God. Jesus Christ is the second person of the Holy Trinity. He is God. He's true man. He's true God. He's both. Two, na two natures in one person, but that person is divine. And it's, if our Lord pretends that, that he's not divine, he's lying. If the Catholic Church pretends that it's not got a unique claim among all the religions of, on the face of the earth, a unique claim to conduct souls to heaven, the Catholic Church would be lying. And if, the Catholic, if a Catholic was to stand in front of a law court and say, uh, all religions are good, but the Catholic Church, Church is just a bit better. He would be lying. Not all religions are good. Uh, well, what, it depends what you want a religion for. 
Do you want a religion to take you to heaven? Then there's only one. Do you mind if a religion doesn't take you to heaven? All right, well, then there are dozens and dozens. Take your pick. But don't pretend that all the other religions are just as valid as the Catholic religion. It's just not true. Christen, th this religion, which converted Europe over several centuries, it converted Rome at the, at the Edict of Milan in 313, uh, it converted France at the end of the 500, uh, 500s, the, the England at the end of the 600s, I think that's accurate. Uh, England had nine centuries of Catholicism before Henry VIII arrived. Therefore, th th there, was, there was built uh, that Catholic foundation of nine centuries made possible the Anglican Church. You, you, you can put water into whiskey and you can dilute the whiskey, but if you want whiskey, you, you don't put water in it as well. You can dilute the truth with lies, but it's no longer made the truth if it's mixed with lies. So if you want the truth, you don't dilute it with lies. You don't mix anything into the Catholic religion, which our Lord didn't put there, and you, main, you keep tradition. And the traditional Catholic Church is the real church. The modernized Catholic Church is diluted with lies. It's not the true Catholic Church any longer. So uh, Western civilization was built by the Catholic Church. It was made possible by the Catholic Church. Free, even Freemasonry, it, put together by the enemies of God and serving the purposes of the enemies of God. Uh, even Freemasonry depended on the Catholic Church. The, the, there couldn't have been Freemasonry without the Catholic Church to prepare people to all kinds of ideas of decency and behavior, which men, Freemasonry maintains, but no longer with Christ. So it's the boy that is riding the bike, learned to ride the bike with his father's hand on the saddle, but who says, who cries out in the name of liberty and his little pride, he's only a boy, his little pride, Dad, please leave me alone, I, I want to ride on my own. And so Dad knows that it's going to be a crash, but he, 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 he hopes that the crash will teach the boy a lesson he needs to learn. So uh, the, truth, the truth then is that, that call it Western, Western civilization or Christendom, that's two very different names. And if it's, if it's Catholicism diluted, like Western civilization has been from its start, let's say at the Reformation, let, that's, when the Catholic, that's when Europe really began to throw off the Catholic Church. Uh, if, if, ever, since the, ever since the Reformation, the boy has been riding the bike on his own and seemingly there's a, first, there's a first period during which the boy can manages to ride because the dad has given him the balance. But after 100 yards, let's say, or 50 yards, whatever it may be, the boy loses, loses the balance and, and, and crashes. Western civilization has ever since Luther, especially Luther, but not only Luther, especially since Luther, Western civilization has been crashing. What's called Western civilization has been crashing. Almighty God in his mercy has sustained the Catholic Church in, in, uh, in other countries, Poland, Ireland, France, Italy, Spain, in the Catholic countries, in the poorer countries, the uh, Almighty God maintained the Catholic Church by the Counter-Reformation. In the richer countries, it's the richer countries, we're rich in commerce and, and, and business, uh, Scandinavia, England, North Germany, and so on. Uh, that, that's where the, the faith was lost to Protestantism. And that's where the, the, the civilization, quote-unquote civilization, immediately began to disintegrate. And Europe has been disintegrating ever since Luther. Therefore, uh, what was Christendom, Almighty God in his, in his mercy, has to some extent sustained in the true church. 
But with the French Revolution, and then with, especially with Vatican II, the, the remaining Catholic states gave up on Catholicism. They went over to humanism. They went over to the religion of Freemasonry. It's Freemasonry with liberty, equality, fraternity that is shot, Vatican II is shot through with the liberty, equality, fraternity of Freemasonry. Therefore, it's no longer, it's no longer what, what was Christendom and what may still, by, at a stretch, be called Christendom does need Christ and it cannot do without him. It tries to do without him like the boy wants to do without his dad pushing on the saddle or holding the saddle and the boy can't do it. The boy can better ride without his dad than civilization can ride without Christ. The civilization that was built up by the Catholic Church and depended on the Catholic Church and was intimately united with the Catholic Church, it can't do without Christ. If, it, if that civilization, in inverted commas, if that supposed civilization throws out Christ, then it's no longer going to be Christendom. What is Christendom without Christ? It's endum, Christ endum, Christendom. So Christ without, Christendom without Christ is endom, or you might say end doom. Christendom without Christ is end doom, and that's exactly what we're living through today. We're living through the end doom of Christians pretending that they can live, that Freemasonry can preserve them and preserve their civilization when it absolutely can't. What's happening now in the United States, I was just watching something on, on, the, on, on YouTube, a horror. The, the Nicaraguan, for instance, or the, the Venezuelan, the Venezuelan crime gangs are, are, were in the Venezuelan prisons. The Venezuelan government, this is a government no longer acting according to Christ, that's for certain. Let the criminals all out of their jails as long as the criminals would go and invade the United States. The young men of fighting age, not married or not certainly not steadily married, the young men, all, all young men without families, without children, without, but as young and fighting and ready to fight, as long as they go to the United States, uh, invade the United States, and uh, uh, cre recreate the, the crime gangs inside the United States to rot the United States from within, as long as they will do that, they're free to get out of prison. And so the Venez Venezuela has emptied its prisons, sending the criminals to invade the United States because of the open border policy, as they call it. And the American government is officially backing the open borders to enable these criminals to come into the United States and recreate the gangs, for instance, in New York, so that the, these, these terrorists can then terrorize the citizens of New York. And the citizens of New York say, our wonderful civilization, the most wonderful that's ever been on the face of the earth, they really believe that because they absolutely believe in Freemasonic ideals of liberty, equality, fraternity. Liberty, liberty for criminals as well. And so somebody with some common sense in the American government says, look, this country is going to be torn to pieces if we keep going this way. Oh, no, 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 say, are able to say the enemies of God and the enemies of true civilization, the enemies of Christian civilization, the enemies are able to say, no, that's against liberty. That's against liberty. And so, and that's what happens when the church is no longer instructing the little Americans or the little Englishmen or the, the little French, whoever it is. And Freemasonry is, has power everywhere today. Freemasonry took the place of the Catholic Church in the guiding of civilization, of what was called civilization. What is still called civilization, what people still think is civilization, but which is turning into absolute barbarism. These terrorists on the streets <coughs> with guns, gunfights, the police are, are almost overwhelmed in England also. 
and go talk to a policeman who knows what's going on inside England. And the police, there are areas of many big cities today in England where the, where the police don't set foot because the enemies of Christianity have taken over. And the English think that they're preserving the civilization of Christ. They're not. They're absolutely not. And we are all going to suffer the consequences. And the, and we, but we are so persuaded of our errors and our... We are so persuaded of these stupid liberal errors, these stupid Protestant errors. We, are, we so believe in the lack of Christ that it's going to take a severe lesson to teach us, to teach us the lesson. We're not going to learn by any lesson except extremely severe. And that's what's, that's what's coming. And when it comes, when this severe punishment comes, it's going to be a mercy of God. To make, us fall, to make us fall off the bicycle and crash and hopefully hurt us enough that we realize that once Christ has built a civilization, it can't continue without him. And if it tries to continue without him, the crash is going to be worse than even ever before. And that's what is, that, that is what is now surrounding us and what is ahead of us. And it will be a mercy of God when he at last intervenes to put us back on track to turn to Christ in order with the help of his sacraments and never without go to heaven. Otherwise, we will be swept by the, swept away like everybody else by the current or by so many who will refuse to, who will realize it. It is a question of God. It is God who is at stake. It, God matters. He's not just a, 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 a cotton wool sugar daddy in the sky somewhere who, who doesn't mind being kicked in the shins or, or, or virtually murdered. And what the, this program said was terrible is the children that are brought with the adults to the frontier and they're allowed into the United States and they fall into the hands of the government's children's agencies, so to speak. And those agencies are so corrupt that the children are, and the people were saying this, who know what they're talking about. He said, come with me for 24 hours on the frontier, on the border down south, and I will show you. And there's no, I have no doubt that that's the truth. And what the, he would show them is a room with children inside it, with, with legs and arms cut off. The children are tortured, they're dismembered, they're cut to pieces, they're raped. Every, anything and everything happens to those children, thanks to official government agencies. This is how serious the situation is. It's not so obvious and evident in England, but I'm quite sure that if you knew, knew where to ask and you knew the right policeman to contact, he could show you, he could show us things going on in, in England which would curdle our blood. But we think it's all marvellous because we are in a civilization of liberty, of freedom. We are, we are running the show. We've got rid, at last we've got rid of God who so limits our liberty with his Ten Commandments and so on and so on. We are now free. We are adult. We are grown up. We've got a marvellous civilization in which the children are being cannibalized. Finally, they're eaten, says this officer who's on the southern border of Texas and knows what he's talking about. My dear friends, God is allowing these things in for our good so that we will eventually learn. He hopes we will eventually learn and learn how serious he is and how, and how absolutely necessary his divine son is to control the human nature which is wrecked by original sin, almost wrecked by original sin. And original sin is always there and it always comes back if it's not combated by Christ. Only God is stronger than the devil. The devil is stronger than all human beings put together, merely as human beings. 
It takes God to defend us from the onslaught of the devil. And the devil doesn't sleep. And the devil wants all souls at the moment largely succeeding in doing. Things are very serious. And it depends on every single one of us turning to God in the way we should turn to him, turning, turn, turning seriously to God. That's what people can't, can't swallow. They don't want to turn back to God. And therefore, our children are going to be, continue being cannibalized, carved up and eaten at the whim of the supposed products of civilization, of Western civilization. My dear friends, we need to, we need to turn to God. And he doesn't ask for, for in, incredible miracles or wonders. It, 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 his mother is content. And this is the, the, this is essential. The mother keeps asking for the rosary. It's, it's her birthday today. It's her birthday today. It's not celebrated because of the Sunday, or there are prayers included in the mass of her, of the mass of her birthday, but the mass is of the Sunday. Let us make a, make a present, a birthday present to Our Lady of, of our taking seriously the cannibalizing of our children. It's in the Psalms. It's in the Psalms that Israelites did it. They, they, when they turned to wickedness, they really went wicked. And uh, the, the Psalms speaks about the cannibalizing of the children, about the, about the horrors that, that erupt, that break out, if people turn away from God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his sheep and the people of his pasture. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen.